All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, and we want to welcome you to this program of the University <coughs> of Arkansas Small Business Technology and Development Center. We are so pleased to be able to bring you these educational programs to help support small businesses in the region and the state. Please be advised that we will be recording this webinar for ASBT DC education purposes. I will introduce our presenter, JT Tam Sampson, momentarily. But first, I'd like to introduce us and tell you a little bit about ASB TDC. I'm Amy Robinson, and I'm here with my co-host, Chris Case. The ASB TDC is a one-stop shop for startups and existing small businesses. We are affiliated with the statewide ASB TDC, as well as a national network of more than 1,000 small business centers. Locally, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting and programs like this one, covering the relevant topics for business owners. And if you're not already a client, we encourage you to visit us at sbtdc.uark.edu. <coughs> In the chat, you'll notice um, some basic 101 uh, instructions for webinar via Zoom. Um, today, we are bringing you everything you need to know about Google My Business. This is webinar format, but JT loves an interactive session. He will be asking you questions and pause periodically for your questions, as well as asking for your engagement via chat. Chris, Chris and I will be monitoring as well, and so you will be unmuted, but please participate via Q&A or chat, and we will be monitoring and facilitating those questions as we go along. You can also, via the Q&A, um, upvote a question. If someone else has already asked your question and you really want that one answered, please be sure to click thumbs up and upvote that question. Now, we are happy to introduce our workshop presenter, JT Sampson, an independent digital marketing consultant who focuses on online presence and reputation management in Northwest Arkansas. He enjoys problem solving and res re responding to challenges, with, which translates very well into knowing how to leverage the internet and social media to improve the online presence for small business. Welcome to you, JT, take it away. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's great to see uh, a few dozen attendees here. Um, if you see the chat box, you know, I, I would just be curious as to where everybody's from. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to type that in. Um, myself, I'm right here in beautiful Fayetteville, Arkansas, and excited to talk to everybody here. Looks like we've got some uh, other areas of Arkansas, so Florida, very exciting. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, and so as we get started here, um, I, I was also curious as to what industries we have represented. Uh, there's somebody from Hot Springs. I love Hot Springs. Great vacation spot. Um, but yeah, what I'd love to do is kind of, you know, know your industries a little bit more. And that way I can try to weave that into my presentation. Uh, music store, love that. I'm a drummer, so if this was in my room, you'd probably see my set. Um, yeah, hearing aid repair. All right, that's that's a good one. I used to be a, a hearing aid specialist. Very interesting. Okay, so a lot of uh, looks like a lot of people that perhaps sell online, uh, services, retail. Very good. We'll we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, basically, with uh, what we want to talk about today is Google, right? We live in a Google world. It's just no, no denying that. <laughs> and so, basically, I want to just walk through how you can use Google to, to help your business and just the things I've learned over the years. A little bit more about me is I've worked with Rev Local for over six years. And it's really a lot of fun working with local businesses and kind of getting to know, you know, owners and what they are offering and, and their mission. And like Amy mentioned, you know, gathering challenges and see how we can help the best. And so one of the things that's been, you know, really helpful is, uh, is just kind of knowing how to use Google the right way and, and also what, what other sites matter, you know, for your industry. But for Google, you know, how often do we Google something instead of just type in a website URL? You know, I remember back when I was a teenager, the internet was a lot more simple. 
it was just websites. Now you have all these search engines, these apps, these directories, databases. It's a little, not a little, it's very complex, a little overwhelming. And so, you know, it's, it's what I tell people is it's just as important to have a solid Google presence as your website. Because again, a lot of people will Google your company um, to get directions, to call, check hours, or even just go look at the menu if you're a restaurant, um, if you're a retail store, obviously your hours, without even going to your website. So it's very important. Um, key statistic there on my screen, um, I think we all use it. You know, I, I would be curious if, if anybody prefers Bing or Yelp or Yahoo or Siri instead of Google, but most people, you know, statistics show 80% of people use Google regularly. But, but yeah, if we have anybody that uses Bing or Yelp or Siri or Yahoo instead, um, I, I would just be curious on that. So the anatomy of a search engine, um, a lot of people ask, <clears throat> you know, hey, when I'm Googling, let's say restaurants, Mexican restaurants are right here, realtors in Fayetteville, why are they coming up and do you have to pay for every position? So the first part is going to be the paid ad. It says ad. That's pretty obvious. That they're paying to be at the top. And then this map part of the search, um, that's what they call local search. And that's basically um, involving Google's formulas. So it says right here, the most relevant prominent businesses appear there. You don't necessarily pay to be ranked in this map part, but you have to work Google's algorithms correctly to do so. Sort of like a recipe, if you're making a stew or a math formula or something like that. And then below here, you have the organic results, which is more search engine optimization, kind of working on your websites. And I see this with a lot of industries. You know, for example, look at realtors, you're also gonna pull up major companies uh, Realtor.com, Zillow. So your website has to compete against Zillow, or Realtor.com, Trulia, uh, hardware stores. If you're looking at hardware stores, you'll see some local companies here, and you'll definitely get you know some Home Depot, Lowe's accounts. So it can be tough for a small business to compete there, but it is a lot more feasible to compete in the local search results and the paid ads. So I'm going to stop real quick. Do we have any questions so far about the anatomy of the search or anything I've covered already? We don't have anything in the Q&A right now, JT. Um, everyone, you are more than welcome to, as some of those things are coming up, to put them in the Q&A. You're also welcome to use the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to chime in and, and we'll definitely try to address the questions for you. So one thing I'd point out too is, you know, any kind of retail store selling products or goods, it's vital to come up on that maps. Uh, Google. Bing, Yelp, Siri, you want to get on as many of those as you can and rank there. Um, if, if you have a, uh, a website where you sell items, the paid ads are great for that because you can set them up anywhere in the, in the state, anywhere in the country. So how, how do you get the Google business listing and begin a presence? So this is the site you go to and to register your business. And Typically, you'll do that with a Gmail account. Um, I'll, I do encounter a lot of businesses that they don't know their password or how to get into it. And so uh, there are ways to go about that. But typically, Google, when you try to log in, if you forget your password or any credentials, they're going to send you a postcard. Sometimes email your Gmail, but it's just to protect you. You know, you don't want any stranger off the street being able to do that and get your Google information. So you'll need to get a code mostly through postcards, especially the first time. And then um, re-verify that if you're doing, you know, if you have an existing account, you can do that through email. But anyway, <clears throat> if you Google your company, you'll, you'll see if you have a listing and, and if you have other listings too, like yellowpages.com, Yelp account, etc. cetera. Uh, you want to lay the foundation. So, Everything mentioned here, address, service area means, you know, if you if you work out of your house and you don't want people visiting your house, which I don't blame you, 
but you can draw it, Google will draw a circle or radius around your city or your area in general to hide your address, but you can still show up in search results. Um, I do see a lot of businesses neglect their hours. Uh, this is very important because I do see negative reviews come in for people that complain like, hey, I showed up at seven o'clock, their hour said they're open, nobody's here. So you wanna adjust those on holidays, um, anything like that, keep on top of them. Okay, phone number, website, and category would be sort of like your your uh, industry, but there's more to it. So if you're looking at a boutique, I'll, let's use that music store example. So you're obviously what I just said, but even more so categories could be like music lessons, instrument repair, instrument store, and so forth. Um, you want to grab as many appropriate categories as you can. And then description is kind of a good opportunity to put a little a blurb, a couple sentences about your business. You want to have in keywords there, like this Mexican restaurant um, has been in Hot Springs since 1955, <clears throat> something like that. Okay, so photos and video, hugely important. Um, anybody that I, I work with, I try to gather their photos in the store or any from social media. And you want to upload your photos uh, as many as you can and as often as you can to Google and also Bing and Yelp. What's very interesting is, is you're able to track the number of views that these photos uh, obtain. So always do that when you have something new and exciting. Keep something fresh on your profile. You get more views, you get more hits, and you, you sort of uh, get more exposure with Google rankings. Um, so far, do we have any questions on creating a listing, verifying the information, anything like that? We do have a request to go um, back one slide um, about what the website was for listing. Um, there you go, the google.business backslash business, google.com backslash business. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, we do have some questions compiling about algorithm and cost and um, ratings, but I think you're going to address that here in just a little bit. You bet. So um, yeah, algorithms and reviews are going to be covered in just a little bit. Uh, cost, this is completely free for you to set up and manage. Just takes them some time. All right, so coming along here, um, this is kind of when you set up everything, this is what you would see. The postcard that's supposed to arrive to verify what you inputted. And these come in, they're very thin, very skinny. They look like junk mail, so don't toss them. Um, but typically you're going to get this code and follow the steps and put it and you're live on Google. Pretty exciting. All right. So once you're going, a lot of business owners I meet with are all about tracking results, right? There's so many ways to advertise, promote yourself, stuff like that. And you want to track what's happening. So the beautiful thing and also sort of the scary thing about the internet is almost everything you do is tracked. So you can track how often you're seen and this basically will give you an idea of what you can navigate and look at. Um, views is typically a very high number because it counts every time people look your business up or they're searching for what you do if you're found. And even if they're on the map, if they're looking at Google Maps, kind of looking at your block, that counts as a view. So that can be extremely high. You know, obviously, um, you know, you're not expecting 5,000 plus customers, so that's kind of the reason why. Um, searches is broken down between like a, an actual list of a search result or people looking you looking up your business on the maps. Anyway. There's also some tools you can use here, like create a post, uh, add a picture. You can do that all from here. I do find it just personal preference. I find it easier to use on a smartphone than on the laptop. So photo, post, that's good if you have a new product. Um, you have like a, some kind of community sponsorship activity you're doing. And then if you want to spend some money on ads, that can be done there. 
So on the posts, just more ideas about that. Uh, they'll typically stay live for seven days and sometimes longer, but that'll give you some ideas on what you can um, use. And people will see this there at the bottom of your Google profile. Updates, events, coupons, etc. cetera. Um, you wanna create the next step, right? So if you have a coupon or, or an event happening, uh, CTA stands for call to action. And you can send them to your website, an, an online ordering system, and uh, click to call button, learn more, etc. So pretty useful stuff. Okay, so your panel, you're going to want to really populate this the best that you can. So the categories, there are some categories that, you know, Google has a handful of those. You can't really make up your own category, but there will be several that you can um, enlist under your name, what cities you cover, uh, link to your website, of course, and then I mentioned earlier the, the description. One thing to watch out for is if you go back and change your address or move, or if you take off a lot of information, it will prompt you to uh, re-verify, which means you're going to get another postcard or email of that code. So be on the lookout for that. Do we have any questions so far over kind of getting in the Google business page going? Well, JT, I want to, there's a couple questions here that I want to make sure that are answered. Um, the first okay. one, any profile, and I'm not sure you might have already touched on this, but do they use their personal email or do they develop a, a business email that they put on their profile? In so you can use either to create your Google account. Me personally, I'd recommend business email. Okay. Okay, here's another question. What algorithm of Google do we, um, or should we be knowing in order to come to the local search? So that is a very interesting question. Um, there's several algorithms and they all kind of consist of 10, 15, maybe 20% of Google's algorithms. So there's not one or two solid things that, that make it for you. Um, I would say on that one, if I'll have my contact info at the, the end of the presentation. That's one where I'd be happy to look at it for you. But I have some tools that you can use to uh, look at your business in depth, run some tests and kind of see if you're meeting the algorithms well, or if there's anything that's sort of hurting your algorithms. Um, so yeah, okay. look at that one kind of case by case. Okay, and we've got a question on rating that I'm sure you're gonna get to, so we'll go ahead and let you um, take over. Hmm. All right, I'll keep marching on. Okay. We're almost there, I know, I know rating's a good topic, so we're almost there. Um, when you're looking at your analytics, something I think is very helpful is, is this uh, circle right here. almost said pie chart. But uh, what's interesting is you'll be able to track who searches for you by name. So that's direct. If they look up Akambaro Mexican restaurant. Discovery is they search for Mexican restaurant or tacos, etc. So the category. And one thing is actually pros and cons to both. But most businesses, you want to see more discovery than direct. All right? Now, if you're a business that depends a lot on referrals, like an engineer, a home builder, something like that, then it's good to know how many direct searches you're getting because that's people who are told about you. How, how long is your word of mouth, really? This is how many people are looking up your company. Um, if you have a company truck, like, you know, that's wrapped very nicely, then you should, you probably will get more direct searches as well. People looking you up on your uh, rolling billboard, if you will. So that's something I encourage everybody to really look at. Um, the keywords, you know, what keywords find you the most heavily important because you can use that information and kind of weave it into your other marketing. Are you coming up on the search or more on the maps? And then, you know, who's, what are, the, what are the next steps? What steps are they taking? So are they going to your website? Are they getting directions to your office? Are they calling? You know, typically like a, a retail store, you're going to lean heavily on really all three, but directions is so important to know how many new customers you're getting because you, 
if you have to get directions somewhere, you likely haven't been there at least ever or in a long time. And then service industries, you're looking at more calls, um, roofers, plumbers, etc. cetera. Um, zip codes, you know, that's another thing too, is you see what zip codes are finding you the most and where you're more popular in, that might be good to do some type of uh, Facebook or, or Google ads in those zip codes or direct mail, et cetera. And of course, phone calls and photos, like I mentioned. Um, you know, I played soccer growing up, so I've always been a competitive person. And if you want to see how you stack up with your competition, there's also a way to, to check that out here where it'll pull that data for you. So pretty interesting. All right, I think we might have some people ready to talk about reviews. Well, I'm going to pause you just one moment, JT. We do want to know if um, you're able to go a little bit more into analytics, um, connecting okay. to a Google business and a Google analytics for more information very specifically. If you can expand on that a little bit. Okay, can you, can you uh, state that again, please? Um, can you connect a Google business and a Google, Google Analytics for more information? Not sure I understand the question. Okay. Fully. What if we just expanded a little bit more into, um, in, into, the, into the analytics that you're doing here, um, into specifics? Um, and, and again, if you posted this question about the analytics and connecting Google Business and Google Analytics for more information, if you want to expand on that, we can either come back to it um, or just uh, put it in the chat or in our questions or Q&A. So I would say um, for right, right. now, go ahead and go into reviews and we'll come back to it. Okay, cool. If I think I know what you're asking, then there is a way to kind of separate website analytics versus Google versus Google My Business versus Google Ads versus Facebook. There are some dashboards that do that, but let me know if, you know, as, if that helps as well. And we can also cover that at the very end. We'll have kind of a more extensive Q&A at the end. All right, so reviews. Um, you know, in the chat box, I'd love to know, you know, who has recently made a purchase and made their decision based on reviews. Either you picked somebody because of their reviews or you decided not to do business with a company because of the poor quality of their reviews or, or lack of reviews. Um, I have a feeling everybody's done that recently, if, you know, if not a few times this month. So uh, it's very important to, to get lots of reviews and, and genuine reviews, you know, real customers, of course. And part of Google's algorithms is they do look at the number of reviews you have, but also the frequency and how recent they are. So if you had a lot of reviews a year ago and you haven't gotten any sense, Google sort of thinks you're asleep and you sort of drop on a list a little bit. But the best thing is, you know, get a review or two every week, a positive review, and that's really going to start helping you climb the ladder on the search result as well. <clears throat> um, there's a, a sort of new feature that's available through the Google Business app, and in some industries it works great. So you can get messaged quickly um, and easily through that. You know, some people are doing their searches or decisions at work <laughs> when they might not be supposed to. So they may use this convenient uh, feature instead of picking up the phone and calling and risking getting in trouble. Um, a lot of people, myself included, um, you know, we, we work hard and we make some decisions or do a little bit of research in the evening. So uh, your business will be closed, of course, you know, 8 or 9 p.m. But this is a good way to find out something or kind of move the needle, if you will, on a, a certain process. So you want to reply quickly to these, and if you feel like there's spam, uh, you can block the person sending it to you as well. Talked a little bit about photos already, but pretty much uh, these are just some ideas of what you can put, and then the quality needed for the picture. So I'm going to stop for a second. If, if everybody wants to take a screenshot of this or make a note um, as far as the photo quality, I think that'd be very important as well. 
That's fantastic. Uh, JT, I do have um, back in the ratings, um, we do have someone asking about bad Google ratings um, mm -hmm. due to a third party and um, wondering if they can improve their rating. Can they delete those or separate them from their company in some way? So um, what, what does that look like? And are there any solutions for when it comes to bad ratings? So we're gonna cover that in just a little bit. I'm, I'm getting ahead. Perfect. Uh, but for sure, bad reviews, we'll cover that. So hold on to that thought. <laughs> Sounds great. I know, I know the slideshow kind of gave you a quick, and this is kind of walking through the algorithms. So managing uploading pictures and reviews is part of the algorithms. And then we're gonna go into reviews more in depth here. Uh, pretty good stat here. Pictures will get people in the door. Uh, that, that's really all that needs to be said. Um, kind of looking at your your services as well. Um, different industries can use different things here. So we we developed a quick list. You know what matters if you're a restaurant, right? Well, I mentioned tracking. Restaurants essentially, you know, the menu gets quadruple. Uh, the number of views as everything else. Um, pictures, website, so it's super important. Uh, products list, if you have retail or online shopping, you wanna build that out. And then the services, you know, if you're an attorney, you know, what else do you, what all areas of law are you covering? Estate planning, probate, trust, et cetera. Insurance, you know, are you covering auto, home, health, life, commercial, et cetera. Um, if anybody has never wanted to to get a website or pay for an expensive one, there is a way to have a quick, simple website done by uh, Google. And that's pretty much, um, you can see that there's a way to click on it on your Google business listing and you're able to set it up and they'll kind of walk you through setting it up very quickly and easily. It is more like a self-managed site though. If, if you want to make the time to do that, that's uh, the way that's done. JT, we have a quick question regarding mm -hmm. images um, a couple of slides ago and asking if there is a max size, a maximum size for images that you can post or a max video size. The maximum, can everybody see the screen again? I went back to that. Looks like 10 megabytes. Um, as far as the video length, I'm not sure about that. If, if you want to make a note and email me that, uh, later, I can try to find out the answer. I feel like it's either half a minute or a minute and a half. Excellent. And the good, another good reason to have taken that screenshot. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, great, that's great information. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So users, you know, we live in a society where you need to have, obviously, sec secure information, right? Anybody who's had their information hacked or stolen knows that um, has been an issue. And so what you have here is you can be the primary owner, obviously, an owner, which is subordinate, and even more subordinate, a manager. But one thing to, to note, too, is if you ever work with a marketing company, uh, you want to remain the primary owner and have them as a manager. Um, there have been some companies, I've, I've heard some sad stories where they – you know, they entered into business with somebody and then they, the, the business canceled and pretty much they, they remained, the company remained primary owners and sort of had control over your account. A little scary. So always make sure you're the primary owner. Um, and I apologize for the background noise here. I have uh, my kitchens being repainted, so they're finishing up that there. Um, on the holiday hours, it's very important to uh, notate when you're shut down, Thanksgiving, Christmas, etc. And just a few advice, uh, pieces of advice here um, that you can kind of work your Google account appropriately. Um, number three is pretty cool because you can gather the data and make adjustments as you go and kind of fine tune your online marketing. Sometimes there's a Q&A section and, and this is open to the public. And so you want to check this every so often to make sure one of your customers hasn't given one of your potential customers um, a, an incorrect answer. Um, you can remove some of those as well. 
And um, yeah, it's very important to respond to reviews. So we're gonna look at that. I know everybody's waiting to see that. So I'll keep on marching here. Uh, one note though is um, if a review is profane, uh, racist, anything like that, if you know it's a competitor, the owner of a competing company, uh, those can be flagged and removed. And that goes kind of right into um, an important stat here that, you know, people, one third of people do look at their responses to reviews. So I have seen some owners get upset and um, really get emotional on their response. And I just encourage business owners, okay, you need to take the high road when you respond. But keep in mind, you're not just responding to this person, but you're responding to future potential prospects that are considering your company over the next few years. So how do you want to be represented or seen by them? Let's see here. So I'm going to go back here. I know we had some more information on reviews. Okay, so we'll go ahead and to take a... Um, a look at the reviews then. Um, who had some questions there on, on that? We did have um, the bad review uh, question, but I think that there have also been just some general questions about, um, about if there are any algorithms when it comes to reviews and managing reviews okay. and um, generally kind of how that works um, as much on the back end as it does on the front end. Okay, we'll take a look at that. So as, as far as the reviews and the algorithms, um, like I mentioned before, gathering reviews consistently is gonna help with your Google algorithms. And then even responding to them does as well. Uh, but it shows you're nurturing your account, you're paying attention, and that tends to help uh, Google trust your business as well as a, as a trusted result, essentially. So um, hopefully that helps as well. Um, did we cover that? And, and also for bad reviews, kind of just taking the high road, um, essentially thinking of your future viewers as well, you know, maybe stating the facts, but in a polite way. And another good thing to do is encourage the person to contact you directly to work it out, especially if it was a, an issue with an employee or something like that. The question um, was very much related to uh, third party um, okay. and that the third party what had gotten the, so they had, they had outsourced, looks like they'd outsourced to someone and there was a third party that um, got the bad review, but it attached it to their company. Okay. And so they wanted to know if there was any way or the best way to handle that. So let me make sure I understand that because when you say third party, it opens up a lot of things. So. So this is you. This person received a review on their business, but it was a different. It was meant for a different company. Is that correct? It looks like so. The very specific question was: We had a bad Google rating due to a third-party trucker that picked up paper from one division of our company. Okay. How can we improve our rating? Okay, that makes sense now. So it's someone that's like a contractor that you use to do business, kind of carry out your business. But they're not employed. Um, I think it's good to, to mention that in your response. Like, hey, we strive to do the best and hire the best truckers we can. Uh, we're sorry this happened. We'll, we'll definitely address the issue with them and, and make sure it doesn't continue to happen. Uh, something like that would be our response. Um, do we have any other questions on reviews? None that I can see. All right. Well, how, um, okay. I think this though JT how many reviews should I be getting a month did you did you already answer that no oh, I didn't answer that okay so it depends on your industry um, if you don't mind putting that in the chat box what your industry is because um, restaurants can get dozens of reviews in a week or in a month if you're a home builder you probably build a dozen homes a year so the opportunity for reviews is all this and it's HVAC. HVAC, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen HVAC companies have uh, 70, 80 reviews total, uh, a couple hundred. So I would shoot for, for 10 a month uh, with their service calls. 
obviously new installs, but typically the service calls are the best because they're, they're familiar with you so much. You've already been there a few times. You have a relationship with them. Um, a great time to get a review in, in that industry specifically is uh, anytime you come out as the hero. So let's say someone gets a new install and you know they were quoted 10,000 for a new AC and you come in and you do it for five or 6,000. You look like a hero. They're very excited to save lots of money. Strike while the iron's hot. That's a great time to get a review and you're going to get a glowing review. Um, you know, or they've been sitting there 90 degrees in August and their AC breaks, which has happened to me. Not very fun. Um, if you're able to get there in a day or two and, and save the situation, um, they're going to be very happy and, and, you know, obviously feel that instant relief. That's a great time to get a review as well. Great. Now Another great one. Um, can someone give a Google review without having to sign into Google? Uh, no, you have to have a Google or Gmail account. There used to be anonymous reviews and then Google sort of shut that down six, seven years ago. Thank you. And, and it's the same for just about every site now, Facebook, Yelp, Zillow, et cetera, TripAdvisor, you got to have an account to leave a review which is a good thing, right? We don't, uh, if it was uh, anonymous reviews everywhere, that'd be a little scary. Okay, one more then I promise I'll let you continue. Um, what is the best way to get reviews? Should I offer us an incentive or discount to my customers? Uh, could, you, <clears throat> could you tell me the industry on that one too? Okay, let me see. Or if you wanna reply, that's, that's gonna play a, a part in what I recommend. Okay, here we go. Landscaper. Landscaper, okay. Yeah, that one you, you could do a, a lot of things with. Um, a lot of owners will send out a text or an email. Um, you know, I think I think a discount on a, on a future service would be appropriate, or if it's a big, you know, $5,000 uh, landscaping job, you know, maybe, Maybe 50 bucks uh, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't hurt. Um, you know, Yelp does frown upon that practice and, and Google's starting to shift that way. So I, I hesitate to say, you know, do that a lot. But um, if you're proactive with a text or an email or something like that, uh, you're more likely to get the review um, as well. Or maybe even, hey, upload your pictures, upload our landscaping job to Facebook or Google, your Google Photos uh, for a discount. That way they do a little bit of work and they actually promote you a little bit um, and the, you know they're able to get earn the discount so to speak uh, with the review okay great thank you sir mm -hmm. all right so um, I was just about near the end here before I went back so if you like some of the information we have we, we have sort of a an email blast that goes out I would I think it's about twice a month, nothing crazy. Uh, we also have a blog, and what we try to do is, uh, Rev Local is, is basically one-stop shop. We're not a search engine ourselves, but we, we try to keep up with the trends on Google, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Yelp, et cetera. So anyway, if you follow the blog, you're able to uh, kind of see you know what's trending on, on different topics. And, and what's the latest? Like, you know, how do you handle this with COVID, et cetera? Uh, that's my info. If you want to save it, um, email, text, call, whatever you need to do. And um, usually if you have like a specific question, I'd be happy to, to address that offline, kind of look into it more in depth. But I'll take some more questions as we wrap up here, if anybody has any. Okay, here's one. Um, how can you remove their physical address, a picture of their home? their business that is that is primarily online how can you remove your address so it's a home-based business and the google street view shows your address well let me read it exactly um how can you remove my physical address and then in parentheses a picture of my home for my business that is primarily online gotcha yeah what you need to do is get to google account and where the address section is you can find like create a service area. And creating a service area will essentially 
draw a big circle over the map of your city and hide your address. Okay, great. Now here's another one. Um, great presentation, they said. Um, they're doing an online store selling pet products, but now the problem is no traffic, no visits to the website. Any suggestions? Sure. Uh, what, what I would say is, you know, you probably have a great website, but you've got to get some avenues or methods to it. So basically, think of it as like, putting a billboard, a beautiful, nice, expensive billboard in the middle of a field that nobody sees. Um, you're gonna wanna work on some kind of ads program. So you need to spend some money on ads to get it seen by people. And as a quick highlight on ads, you know, the Google search ads just put you at the top of a Google search in what area you choose. Facebook and Instagram ads, they can hone in on demographics, like women age 20 to 40, in this county or soccer fans um, you can you can use that and then there's also geofencing which sort of says hey I want to be seen in this area when people are checking the weather checking ESPN YouTube all on their phones those are types of ads that get people more so aware of what you offer it's, it's great if you have something new um, something to disrupt the market um, just people may not think of it but that's a good way to say hey Here's what we have, hopefully you like it. Hey T, we have a couple of um, kind of bigger strategy um, uh, regarding reviews. Um, someone works in a commercial furniture firm and doesn't get a lot of reviews and wants to know how um, to get reviews or encourage people to get reviews. Simultaneously, um, you know, we talked about, there was also the question about incentives and discounts to the customers. So I think that those are kind of combined with a question that you already answered and this new question about how to get mm -hmm. reviews. Sure. So commercial furniture, um, that any kind of commercial review is a little bit harder because business people are very busy. You already get way too many emails and texts. Do you want to stop and give a review? But at the same time, the business owner should know how it feels. They want to review too, most likely. So what I would recommend is uh, talk to that person individually, face-to-face, -face, uh, make a call on that one, kind of make sure they stop what they're doing and you have their attention and just say, hey, we're trying to build our reviews. You know how important reviews are to your business. Uh, would you mind going here and then send them the link to Google? and that should have a, a better response. Right, are there any other, um, any other applications or processes that they can combine those together with? Um, just kind of a customer service process is part of what that sounds like, um, or adding it to like the end of a, an email um, signature or anything like that that you've seen that's kind of on the, mm -hmm. on the creative side? Yeah, that's a great question. So I see a lot of that uh, getting added to the email signature. So everything you send out, that's going to get the reviews seen. I have an insurance client that that uses that link uh, to help close like commercial deals. So it's very helpful to do that. Um, there's also some tools where you can embed your reviews on your website to kind of double up on getting them seen. Okay, that's, great. that's a great concept, yes. Um, I think that one of the things I'm noticing, JT, is I think that you will get a lot of follow-up questions um, via email. We have um, a lot of people asking about very specific industries, which you obviously very specifically have um, uh, experience with, and traffic to websites, and some other tips that people can follow up with you on. So um, I think that at this point, we'll go ahead and um, and be done for this webinar but obviously we will be having you back um, because this is a very popular topic and we also have you for some other very popular topics so we just want to thank everyone again for being here as a registrant and an attendee of this webinar you will be emailed a copy of this presentation as well as a brief survey that will help us continue to serve you and bring you quality programs Find a full listing of our workshops at sbtdc.uark.edu, which you can find at the handy dandy QR code in front of you. 
and sign up for notifications and become a client. We are also posting on social media, so follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So please stay in touch and we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone.